Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and in this episode I'm taking cheap frozen store-bought desserts and attempting to plate them up so that they look fancy and like they came from a restaurant. I'm only going to try and use strawberries and cream as extra ingredients but apart from that just what's in the dessert. Look at this slice, it looks tiny. When I compare it to the size of a strawberry and the picture that they have on the box, their slice literally looks huge. The only way I could get a slice to look that big would be to cut across the whole cheesecake. Say goodbye to that tiny cheesecake slice and hello to this one. That looks a bit more in proportion, but my strawberry does still look a little bit big compared to the slice when I'm looking at the packet. So apart from cutting huge slices across the whole cheesecake, how can we plate this thing up to look a bit more amazing? Well first of all I want to separate the topping, filling and base. It's frozen so it's super cold and I'm trying to just get the topping off and into the bowl if I can. In the next bowl I'm going to put all these sort of scraps of filling, the bits I can't separate basically. Now I need to get the base off. Let's cut it in half first and then try and cut the base off. Wow, this is really dry and much more crumbly than I was expecting. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, an online platform where you can make your own website or online store. More about that later. Now we have the base, the cheesecake filling, the strawberry topping and the cheesecake and strawberry bits mixed together that I couldn't separate and the same from the base and cheesecake bits that I couldn't separate. Okay let's start with this one. I'm going to heat that up in the microwave and give it a stir and then put spoonfuls into the base of some glasses. Clearly this is not going to be enough so let me just scoop some more in, be a little bit more generous there and then wobble on the top with a spoon just to flatten it out and get that nice perfect line all the way around the glass. Now to mash up the cheesecake filling, if you let it come to room temperature and then whisk it you can get it quite runny and then just pour that in over the top of the strawberry. Now what should we do with this crumbly mess? Let's add in the cheesecake mixture that had crumbs stuck to it and heat that up to melt it. Mix it together, pressing the cheesecake mixture into the crumbs and then using your hands to press it together to make like a crumbly dough. Roll that out fairly thin and then cut out a large circle and then a smaller hole slightly to one side. Now this dough is super crumbly as I said so I'm going to leave the circle shape that I want on the baking paper and take away the spare dough and that way I'm not moving the shape that I want so it's going to stay in that shape. Then just bake those in the oven. Take some fresh strawberries and cut some slices and whip up some cream and then it's just time to put it all together. Flip the cookie over and pipe three dots of strawberry cream. Now the strawberry cream is just that bit of topping and cheesecake mixture that I couldn't separate mixed together. Add a little sprig of lemon thyme into each one. Then pipe some cream onto the cookie, just piping three little towers of cream. There we go. Then carefully pick it up and flip it upside down and place it inside the rim of the glass, just balancing it there. Use some strawberry cream to fix the strawberry slices into place and that is plating number one. They look like mini gardens with floating clouds. Next we have another cheesecake but this time the sauce is not just on top, it's mixed into the cheesecake so I can't really separate it. The base came off this one much more easily than it did on the last one. It's not quite as dry and crumbly but I'd want to make a moister dough than last time so I'm going to take an extra scoop of that cheesecake mixture and add it in. Roll the dough out on some plastic wrap and then cut strips and using the plastic wrap to help you lift it up and wrap it around the inside of a cookie cutter. Remove that plastic and then with the dough still around the inside cut a base. Remove the extra dough from the outside and bake that in the oven. Once they're baked remove the cookie cutter 
and pipe in the filling. I've just whisked this filling together because it had that little bit of strawberry all through it, so it's got that slight pink color. Add the topping over the filling and spread it out, and then top it with diced fresh strawberries and a few little lemon thyme leaves, and then a scoop of store-bought strawberry sorbet. That's plating number two, the classic individual tarts. For plating number three, we're gonna go a bit more modern. Place the cookie cutter on some baking paper and fill it with the whisked cheesecake filling. And this is using the same frozen dessert as the first one. Put that in the freezer. A lot of modern plating has microwave sponge cake on it. Now it's gonna be hard to make it with these ingredients. It would be much easier to make it from scratch, but in the essence of what we're doing, I'm gonna use the base, add a little bit of red food coloring and a little bit of egg, cheating a bit there, and then put it into a cream siphon and see if we can aerate it. There's just not really enough of this mixture. And then you just microwave that. Get the sauce and add a little bit of red food coloring to make it a bit more dramatic. Spread out some of that sauce onto baking paper really thin and bake that in the oven. Now let's spread some of the sauce across the plate. Add the disc of cheesecake filling and make sure it's really smooth on top. Arrange bits of the cake that we made from the base onto the plate, as well as the now crispy sauce that we baked and one cube of strawberry. Sprinkle on some crumbs from the base and add a small quenelle of ice cream on top and you have a modern monochromatic deconstructed cheesecake plating. Squarespace have pre-designed modern website templates and you can customize the layout and the fonts and the colors to make it look just how you want and then get right on to creating, blogging, sharing photos, videos, selling products, whatever your dream is. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial or squarespace.com backslash how to cook that for 10% off your first domain or website purchase one more and then you can tell me which one is your favorite take some of the base mixture mixed with the cheesecake and roll it out really thinly between two sheets of baking paper and of course bake that in the oven spread some of the sauce out and bake that too and then grab a plate and add some crumbs around one side of the plate in a curve now i've gone a bit too far there you don't actually want a semicircle so just Take it back a bit and then pipe on the filling in a few different dots. You could always set this in a hemisphere mold if you wanted little domes and then add a few dots of the sauce. Then add some of our crispy baked bits from the oven. Gastrophysicist Professor Pence studied food presentation and he found that even when simple dishes were plated well, people found them to be more flavorful. That is, when they surveyed them, they said they tasted better, even if it was the same food. And they were willing to spend up to three times more on the ones that were plated beautifully. Given the choice of desserts in our fridge, everyone in my family went for the plated desserts over the normal slice, even when I told them it was the exact same thing. Visual appeal is so important. Dave went back the next day and had the normal slice and said he was so disappointed it didn't taste as good. Let me know in the comments which plating you liked the best. With thanks to my wonderful patrons for all of your ongoing support, please do enjoy some more of my videos here and subscribe to How To Cook That for more crazy sweet creations and food science. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.